Hey guys, CryptoCine here. Today I'm going to explain Ripple, specifically aimed to newcomers, because Ripple has been there since 2013, but has always been like in the same state for four years now. Then obviously the cryptocurrency spike like with every cryptocurrency came, but with Ripple, especially in the last seven days, they they more than tripled the market cap, which is insane because this currency has been there for almost five years now because it came out in, 20, in 2013 and now tripled the market cap because people are realizing what this technology is capable of doing. If we look at this graph here and if we compare Ripple to something like Bitcoin, Ethereum or Bitcoin Cash, you can see that Ripple has a much faster speed in terms of transaction speed very very low transaction costs and is much more scalable than all the others because for example bitcoin with 16, tra 16 transactions per seconds no bank can use this it's irrelevant for banks to even look at this so ripple was designed especially for banks because the payment infrastructure of banks or in general, was built before the internet. And so the payment structure got very few updates. So nowadays, if you do cross-border payments, first thing, they are very slow. They take up to three to five days. Secondly, they are unreliable. They have high failure rates. Thirdly, they are very expensive for banks and for the sender also for the receiver because they have very high transaction costs. Another thing that's not standing right here is, for, if we take an example of a cross-border payment uh, across a few countries, there are many intermediary banks and every intermediary bank has your identity, which really is not safe because you have to trust the bank that they don't leak information or they don't show anyone your identity. and yeah, you know how this is going in the 21st century. So, the price spike, I explained it in uh, my previous video, but to shorten this up, the price spike in the last seven days came because Asian banks are now actually testing and using the Ripple network. Right now, they're only testing the network, but they are considering using the currency Ripple 2. So another great thing about Ripple is that if we take an example, I'm a European. If you want to transact 100 euros to Bob, an American friend of mine, but he wants to receive US dollars, it's no problem. I can send 100 euros and he will receive a one to one ratio of the evaluation of that in USD. So Ripple and the Ripple network, you can use it with every currency in the world. That's a very great thing. So Ripple has recently, like I said, partnered with big Asian banks, but one of the biggest partners is actually American Express, which all of you out there have at least heard of. And that's a huge, a really huge thing. So, a really nice thing about Ripple is that they have um, three different packages you can work with. For example, if you're a bank and you're interested in using the Ripple network, you can use them out of the box. There are the process payments, which is X current, the source liquidity for X rapid, and the send payments with X via. Well, X via and X rapid are actually in development right now but xcurrent is already out so you can process payments from one bank to another bank cross-border without any intermediary banks how the technology actually works behind the scenes I'm going to try to cover in my next video because this is a more complicated um, thing to describe so with xcurrent you can process payments cross-border from one bank to another bank. Obviously, they both have to use the Ripple network. 
but they can use USD and they can use the Chinese Yen, for example. Then XRAPID is for the liquidity cost, costs of banks. They can actually minimize it while still improving the customer experience, which is a big thing because with banks, everything is around costs, costs, costs. They want to lower their costs as much as possible. And that's why the banks uh, are using and testing the Ripple network because the transaction costs are so low that banks actually can lower their costs up to 30%. And that's a big amount for banks. Then we have XVIA. With XVIA, you can send payments. So these are the senders, you send the money over the Ripple net and the beneficiaries or the senders get the money. So like I said, XVIA and um, XRAPID are still in development, but XCurrent you can actually use out of the box. So if you're wondering where you can buy Ripple, they also have a site which I'm going to link in the description where you can buy Ripple. So for institutional purchases, you actually have to contact them, obviously, because this is where big companies like American Express are purchasing Ripple. But you can, for example, in the US on Kraken or Bitstamp, if you're Korean, Coin1, um, Japan, I think, is Bitso, CoinCheck. And for Europeans like me, I'm buying all my Bitcoin on Lightbit, which is a really great thing. So to sum this up, Ripple has been in the top 10 since it came out. And now people realize that Ripple is really a game changer in terms of payment infrastructure for banks. Like I said, cross-border payments for banks have a very high risk of failure and you have a very high, high risk because you have to trust each bank that has your identity so that they don't leak your identity or they don't spread your information around. Plus, transaction fees are very high and Ripple can actually lower them. So, Ripple is a real game changer in terms of payments and how payments will work in the future. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will try to do my best to answer them. Also, if you liked the video, don't forget to obviously like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.